So you will have this example. Okay. Okay. You have this example. So example number one. Okay. Example number one. Okay. So from the beam shown, now this is one of the most extensive question. Okay. Extensive means there are a lot of layers. Okay. There are a lot of layers that, that I will not take it for granted that you know, but I'll teach you. Okay. So for the beam shown, consider section NN and determine the shearing stress at point A and at point B. Right? So I'm going to write down the, 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 the procedure. Okay, I'm going to write. So it's a very simple problem like this, but there's a lot of layers that we have to that, that we have to consider. Okay, or not consider. There are a lot of layers that we need to uh, analyze. Okay, so I, I, I will I will try to do everything on one page, and I know it's impossible. Okay, but I'll try. So let me write down the, 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 the procedure first. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to uh, draw. Okay, we're going to draw the free body diagram. Okay, we're going to construct free body diagram. And then we are going to find the reactions at point uh, A and point B, okay, very quickly, and this is by using uh, static analysis. Okay, which is real straightforward. You guys have been through week one and week two already, which is worse than static analysis. Then we are going to sketch, okay, we are going to draw the uh, shear force diagram. So the shear force diagram is important because we're going to determine determine okay, we're going to determine our V. Okay. And then we are going to go into our shearing stress. So our shearing stress again, we are going to find the centroid position, right? We have to know where the centroid position is. Then we're going to find the second moment of area. All right? Then after that, we're going to find the first moment of area. Then I'll go further, okay? We are going to look at the, we are going to look at the sharing stress distribution equation. I'm going to do this extra, okay? So this is sharing stress uh, distribution equation. And then we are going to then finally determine the stress at point A and the stress at point B. So I'll take this example as a, like a, a, a teaching, okay? So you, you know how to apply. So, so whatever I write now, okay, we are going to apply whatever that is written on page two. Okay, see, let me see what's on page one. So page one, yep, we're going to apply uh, the formulas in page one, okay? And then we are going to go into page two. Okay, all the analysis, okay, all the analysis will be on these two pages and also page number, no, no, page number three is just proving the concept to all of you, okay? Right, here we go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to construct our free body diagram. So on our free body diagram, 
we are going to declare two axes. Okay. Now, I, I hope you guys will follow uh, this procedure because as a professional engineer, okay, as a charter engineer or professional engineer, when we do calculation, we have to be very thorough. Okay. Again, I've used calculation like this as an expert witness okay, that other professional engineer has to verify. So I hope you will follow this procedure. It's very thorough. And it's important, okay? Because someone else were to analyze your structure, need to know what you're telling them, okay? So that's why I'm, I'm very rigid in this aspect. So this is X and this is Y. This is rotation about Z, okay? So we're going to construct our free body diagram. Okay, so from here, this is our point A. And this is our point B. And we know that there's a load coming down at 180 kilonewton. Now, with a load coming down at 180 kilonewton, it is not necessary that Vy is equal to 180 kilonewton like what was highlighted earlier is p always equal to vy for this case it is not but for some cases it can be so we have to check okay so if you look at the reaction down here you have a y and you have reaction over here you have by okay then from here you can form an equation then sorry so you have your distances Okay, so you have a distance from here to here. This is equal to 0 0.5 meters. And likewise, from here to here, this is also equal to 0 0.5 meters. Okay, so from here, you can, you can do some mention about forces. In the y direction is equal to 0. So you can have a y plus by by minus by 180 times 10 to the power 3 newton is equal to uh, zero. So this is your equation one. So the next thing you can write is based on, based on symmetrical loading, And geometry about the y axis right we can declare that a y is equal to b y okay and we're going to substitute this into equation number one Okay, we're going to substitute this. So therefore, 2ay is equal to 180 times 10 to the power 3. Ay is equal to 90 times 10 to the power 3 Newton. And this is also equal to what? By. Okay. If you don't use this, another way to do it is if, if, if you don't apply this rule, fine. I'm fine with it. So all you need to do is just do this. You just need to do an extra summation about moment in the Z direction at point A is equal to what? Zero, right? So you're going to take, so you, you have uh, 180. So this will be equal to minus 180 times 10 to the power 3 multiplied by 0 0.5 plus by 1 multiplied by BY is equal to zero. So you have here by is also equal to what? 90 times 10 to the power 3 Newton. And then you substitute this into equation 1, right? You also get what? 90 times. So it's the same thing. Okay, so this is uh, alternate solution. Okay. So the next thing 
we are going to look into our shear force diagram. All right, so in a shear force diagram, we're going to construct our shear force diagram. So I'm going to change my view. Now, anyone have any question that you have to, you have any question they're not sure, you can stop me and ask me, okay? So this is your V, right? And then over here, this is your X, right? So this is two, four, uh, this is 0 0.5. And this is two, four, and this is one. So the entire thing is one meter. So this is X and it's in meters. And then this is zero and this is 90. And over here is minus 90. So your shear force diagram will comes with, and this is how you look like, okay? So at point A, from it will go up to 90, right? Then it will go to uh, 0.5, right? Then you have 180 pushing it down. Okay, so this is 90, 180. And then you're running horizontal again. And then you come back up. All right. Okay, so this over here is your shear force diagram. Okay, this over here is your shear force diagram. Okay, and from here you can see, right, they, were, uh, they are interested to ask us to find where. We want to find NN, right? But the problem is NN, they did not give us a distance, did they? Right, when you look at the problem, hey, I, I don't have a distance that is NN. I don't know this distance. Now, question for you, is that distance important by looking at the shear force? So the distance is not really important, right? The distance is anywhere down here, as long as before the 180, right? So this is the... This is your X distance of interest. You can increase it to another position. It is still the what? The same. But make sure you don't, you don't, you make sure it's going, the X has to be less than 0 0.5, which it is, right? You see down here, it is not going beyond 0 0.5. Okay, it's just saying it's in that region. Okay, so from here, we can declare that V in a y direction is equal to 90 times 10 to power 3 newton. Okay, it's 90 times 10 to power 3 newton. Okay, so that is your, uh, that is your uh, shear force diagram. Okay, so we have found our V already. So where we are in our analysis, we have done this, we have done this, and we have done this. Okay, next we are going to find the shearing stress, okay? So the shearing stress, first of all, okay, what are we trying to determine down here, okay? So if we, if we look at our transformation now, okay, if we look at our transformation now, right? So if we were to draw our transformation for this one, this is X and this is Y. Over here is rotation about Z. And from this view, right? This is going to be our Y. This will be our Z. This is rotation in the X direction, right? So one transformation the bit, the belongs to the left-hand side. The other one belongs to the right-hand side. So this right-hand view, this is the, 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 uh, the, the, the cross-sectional view. Okay, this is the cross section of view, right? So now, if I were to pick an element, okay, so we're going to pick an element, okay? I'm going to draw the element in 3D form, okay? I'm going to draw the element in 3D form. So I'm going to sketch the element in 3D form now. Okay, so in this form, 
this is my X, this is my Y, and this is my Z. And the shear force, right? The shear, the shear force is coming down in this direction. 